Arnold van den Boot is at the desk now with us to talk about debt collection uh, methods in South Africa. Arnold, I think we need to set a scene here. We hear about garnishes, and that's an area that you have involvement with. You also call them by something else, EOAs, emolument, att EAOs, emolument attachment orders, but they're known as garnishes. And then this debt then sits there and can be sold on. It's complicated. Won't you set the scene for us? Uh, well, uh, garnishes or emoluments attachment orders are used to collect debt and it goes normally with the consent of a debtor and it's, it's a court order so it's an order not issued by anyone else except for the courts and the court orders the employer of the debtor to pay over a certain amount per month so it's an installment and that installment is then used to pay off the debt. Why do they do this? Uh, all other avenues have been exhausted. Generally, yes. Uh, in our experiences, is that um, uh, debts have already been um, non-paid for 17 months before the matters are being handed over to us. For instance, the the, the company I'm working at. Um, but it's, it's quite a big problem in this country because people are overloaded with debt. So debt collectors first start phoning them. They use soft collection methods. Um, it's a call center, so they try to make an arrangement with the debtor to repay. If the person can't repay or if he's not willing to repay, then it's handed over for legal collection. And there are various avenues you can use in legal collections like summonses, but also consent orders, consent judgments or emoluments attachment orders. Mm. Anud, how, do you, how does a company such as yourself, as yourself make money uh, from this you're talking about soft uh, collection methods but how does this work uh, debts are hand generally handed over to to collection agencies or attorney firms and most of them act um, on a percentage commission basis so for every rand that's collected you get a certain percentage in and the more difficult the debt is the higher the percentages that that's being given to the collector um, normal attorneys would usually charge you a certain amount of fees but in, in the, in the uh, say, the, the mass market for debt collection, it generally happens with commission. Mm -hmm. So, oh, sorry, yeah. David. Yeah. What is the, uh, the, the, the standard, uh, you know, agreement with your, with, your, the, the, with your clients, so to speak? You say it's, it's based on commission, so what is the percentage there? Well, it ranges. If, if you, for instance, collect for, for a municipality, it would amount to about 10%. Um, because it's considered to be a bit more easier to collect on. But the more it becomes older debt or when, uh, when, when debtors are more difficult to find, then a percentage can go up to 25, say 30 percent. But then you have to add legal costs also. The attorney firms who do the collections, they add legal costs and the collection firms. And that's normally added on the account of the debtor after the percentage. So a debtor would owe, say, for instance, 100 Rand. He would pay 100 Rand plus legal costs, mm -hmm. but a portion of that 100 Rand will be paid over if successfully collected to the collector. So now you've got uh, one law and you've got canvas. There have been lots of television adverts. The one in particular I think of is the lady with the glasses who says, I can retire and be a lady of leisure. Uh, and the 19.5% is the number that comes to mind there. What's that about? Um, it's generally discounting of debt is not a, a well-known um, fact, say for instance, for the general uh, for population in this country. Banks use it. So they tend to buy a book at a discount and then collect on it and get a, get a certain collection on it. But or a retailer will sell its debt to someone else. Like That's correct. Edgar's, yes. I think, sold it to Absa. Some Absolutely, company. yes. It's just an example. There are more, more players in the market. It's not just banks. Um, but what Canvas is doing is just offering a marketplace for people or general public to actually involve themselves in the specific market so they can buy an asset at a discount. And that asset would be either a, a, a collection matter where a debtor is repaying it, so there's no extra cost added to the debtor, but it could be even something like a cell phone contract or anything where there's a cash flow coming in over a certain period of time and the owner of that matter cannot wait to get it over that period of time, he wants the money unlocked immediately, then he would sell it on a canvas platform. Mm. Mm. Anud, I think um, th there's just an, an area that we're looking for a clarification on. I think that was the arrangement between Bridge, Flemix and One Law. Now Bridge, I understand, would have been the, the client who would have employed either Flemix or One Law to do the debt collection. But there were a lot of reports that came out that the manner in which this was done was just putting consumers uh, more and more into debt and just basically putting them in a vicious, in a vicious cycle. Uh, a lot of uh, complaints with regards to how this was handled, how this was done. What's been the response to that? 
Well, one law firstly does not collect debt. We are only a service provider to various attorneys' firms, um, and we provide IT systems and networks of consultants who go and personally consult with debtors. And one of the attorney firms on our platform is Flemix. And, and uh, Flemix got various clients, um, Bridge might, might be one of them. Um, I think what many people must see in the market is, is there's a lot of credit being extended in the market. If people can afford to repay it, and they're willing to repay it, the arrangement is made between our consultants on behalf of the attorneys with the debtor to repay. And um, so, it, although it's stated as a vicious circle, it's not a vicious circle. It's the repayment of existing debts where people can afford it and where they are willing to afford it. Because our model is, is based on the, on the fact that um, debtors can, when they c can afford it, um, because we do an affordability test, um, that we arrange with their employers to get the money back. Um, on the debt that's being, being owed. Now the so-called garnishee orders are under pressure and there's talk also that, you, as you said, it's a court order. Bobby Godsell, who was the head of Anglo Gold Ashanti, actually said a while ago, people shouldn't pay these garnishee orders. In fact, they have no choice. It's a court order. But a lot of them are said to be fraudulently gained. That's one issue. Another is that the law might change. How is that going to change the landscape? I think the context is extremely important and, and we were concerned about statements being made for instance by, by the person you referred to um, is because there was a lack of knowledge about the amount of emoluments attachment orders in the market. So we, we obtained the services of University of Pretoria Law Clinic to draft a report to actually find out how big is this market and what problems are there in this market. So the report is freely available and, and it can be accessed also from the University of Pretoria Law Clinic. It actually confirmed that there were about 700,000 emoluments attachment orders in this country but those orders include orders for maintenance and orders for administration now if you look at the single parents in this country it's quite a lot I assume the the maintenance orders will probably amount to say 350,000 so my gut feeling is there's there's about 300 to 400,000 emoluments attachment orders in this country so not the millions that were being referred to neither the billions that were being taken from consumers so Yes, there might be abuse in certain portions of the market, but I think in every, every kind of market, whether it be credit or insurance or collections, there is um, problems that need to be addressed by regulations. Um, our assessment is no reg extra regulation is needed. It's, uh, it's quite tightly regulated market. And, and I think when people get context from reports, they actually start to understand what, a, what the value of the debt collection market is. For instance, there was a report drafted by Econometrics, and they, they try to find out what the impact is on the economy um, of non-payment or slow payment of, of credit. Now, this only relates to credit. It has an impact of about 20 billion rands on this, on this economy. It's quite a lot. On the GDP, about 9 billion. And, so, and the interest rate is being affected by 1.25%. Yes. So if you add that up and you take away the emoluments attachment orders and make it more difficult, you will double that. So that means there will be in, in the region of about 45 billion rands lost to the economy and about say 170,000 jobs are being lost. So it's, co it's got a vast impact and there are lots of statements being made but it's unfounded and, and uh, there are lots of reports actually showing now what is the true fact. Okay. Arnold, thank you so much for making the time to join us and uh, talking us uh, through that. That was Arnold van der Boot. He's a Chief Operating Officer of One Law.